Let's build on our previous nugget where we covered database design and looked at a very simple design for customers, products, and orders. So we're gonna bring that design to life using Microsoft SQL Server. We're gonna create a database from scratch, create some tables, load them up with data, and query them. Let's do it. Here we are on a database server where we have SQL Server 2016 installed and we have our management tool, SQL Server Management Studio, opened up and ready to go. I also have a connection to this server and you can see that we already have some databases on here, but we wanna start from scratch. So we're gonna create a brand new database. We can easily do that by right clicking on the databases node and choosing new database. Here we can give it a name. I'll call this MyDB. That's about all we need to do. This will create the underlying files that make up this database. There are two of them, a primary file where all of our data and our objects go and a log file, which is essentially a staging area for all modifications to data and objects. That way we can roll forward and roll backward any changes that happen in this database. So this looks good, we'll hit okay, and that's all there is to it. We now have a fresh empty database ready to go. Now our next step is to create some database objects. Specifically here, we need some tables so we can put some data inside of this database. You can see currently there are no tables inside of here, and there are a couple of ways to do this. We can use the structured query language, which is what we're gonna do here. I've got a couple of scripts that we're gonna walk through to, uh, to create these tables. You can also use the GUI, the graphical user interface here. There are designers associated with almost every database object. So this is a nice, easy way to do it graphically. Enter in your column name, choose your data type, if you wish to allow empty values or not, what are known as nulls, and then you can set properties for each column that you define. So that's one way to do it. But of course, using the GUI doesn't make it very repeatable. Using the structured query language, we can easily recreate these tables at any moment. So we're gonna use the create table statement, DDL, the data definition language, to create all four of these tables. Notice we have a customer's table, a products table, an orders table, and an orders details table. Now creating this table is pretty straightforward here in SQL. We specify our column name, followed by our data type, and also notice that we're designating the primary key for these first three tables. We don't have one yet for this last table. I'm gonna show you how we can do that using database diagrams. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. We actually need to switch our database here to make sure that these tables are created in this MyDB database. All right, so we pointed the script at this database. Now when we hit execute, it will create all four of those tables. And if we refresh our tables node, we should see them all right there. And they're all currently empty. We'll get some data in them shortly. But the first thing we wanna do is finish our database design here. And we're gonna use the database diagram to do this. I'll choose new database diagram. I will add all four of those tables into it. And we, another thing we need to do here is set up relationships between these tables. And using a database diagram is a nice, easy way to do this. So here are all of these tables. We've got one more over here somewhere. There it is, products. Can't forget about that table. So we'll bring all of these into view. Now, whenever you click on an item over here, we can give it a right click and we can choose to view the properties. And now we can see the properties of this column and you can modify any of the properties here. One thing we need to do is make the primary keys of these an auto number field. And that's actually known as an identity column. So if we look in the properties here, if we scroll down somewhere in the middle, there it is, identity specification. We just wanna turn this on and that will automatically increment this value starting at one sequentially every time a new record is added. We're gonna do the same thing here for our product ID and our products table, and we'll do the same thing here for our order ID. Now, order details is a different beast entirely because we don't need an auto number field since the combination of order ID and product ID will be unique. So the first thing we need to do here is to designate both of these as the primary key together, which is known as a composite primary key. So I highlighted both of those. We can give this a right click and choose to set primary key. And now the combination of both of those is the primary key. So that'll guarantee unique records in that table. Another thing we need to do here is configure relationships. We have a relationship here between product and product ID, and we can just drag those columns on top of each other. And this will show us our primary key table and our foreign key table and the columns that are linked together. We can hit okay there. And look at that, we now have that relationship link ready to go. We'll also do the same thing here between orders and customers. There we go, same exact thing, looks good. And then one more here, order ID to order ID. And we have our relationship set up. Now we can make this a little prettier here by right clicking in the background and choosing to arrange tables. And there is our database design. Now let's save all of those changes that we made. We'll hit the save button here. We'll call this my DB diagram. That way we can come back in here at any time uh, to reference it or modify or work with all these table at, at once. We'll hit yes and that will save all of those changes to the database, including this database diagram. And we can access that at any time here 
underneath database diagrams. There it is. So we're good. I'll close out of that. And the next thing we need is some data to work with. So I've got another script here that will load data into all of these tables, just a couple of records for every single table. And notice here that it's just a bunch of DML, insert statements for each one of these tables. There's also a command here to allow us to insert identity values into that auto numbered column. And that's about it. That's the entirety of this script. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this and that will put all of that data into these tables. Let's take a look at some of that data. Let's look at the customers that we have here. If we right click on that customers table and do a select top 1000 rows, this will bring back, you can see we have three customers inside of here. Let's take a look at our products table here. We've got three products within here as well. If we take a look at orders here, we can see our orders. Look at that, we've got some orders to work with. And we can also look at order details. And this will show us the quantity that was ordered for each product. And notice that a single order can contain multiple products. So we have a database, we have some tables, and we place some data into those tables. The next step is to write a query to make sense of all of that data. We're gonna point this query at our new database here, and now we can execute it. And look at that, what this is gonna do is bring back all of the products, the total cost. Notice here we have these sums. This is actually rolling up all of this data. We use aggregate functions to do just that, combined with the group by clause, which in this case is grouping on the name of the product and then just rolling all that data up into a summary. So this could easily be a query that powers a report or a web page. In fact, we could even turn this into a stored procedure and parameterize it so people can search for specific products or search for specific values for all of this aggregated data. We could also transform this into a view and then provide users with access to this view so they could create their own reports based on this data. And that's actually very easy to do using the structured query language. Watch this. We'll do a create view, a little more DDL here, and give our view a name. How about product sales summary? And then all we need is an as here, and then this query will define the body for this view. I'll execute this, it'll create the view, and now we can use SQL and treat this view just like a table. Select star or asterisk or splat, that just means return all columns from, instead of table here, we specify our view, which is right there, product sales summary. Now we can execute just that line of code and look at that, same results. That just executed the query within that view and that's why a view is really just a stored query. In this CBT nugget, we went full circle with our database design using SQL Server by creating a database, creating some tables, loading them up with data, writing a query against it, and turning that query into a view. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.